great and very excited for this next matchup. Uh, selfishly, because it's my weight division, uh, it's 90 kilograms, and we have seen some excellent things out of uh, both of these fighters. First out is in the white corner from Russia, Mikhail Grigorev. Uh, he is making his way to the ring right now, and his opponent, uh, who is uh, undefeated so far and has has done oh. so with a very stoic, calm demeanor. Oh, he's uh, uh, huh. the the the, <laughs> the man from uh, Kyrgyzstan who I will not try to to attempt his last name, but Aknazar is uh, is already shadow boxing and warming up, ready for his name to be called after the Russian takes the stage. Mm -hmm. And I love the way he does his shadow boxing and his warm up. It's very minimalistic. Uh, it's uh, a little bit of the warming of the hands, maybe a little bit of a jog on, on the spot, but he's not, he's not breaking a sweat yet. And there's Arthnazar making his way to the stage, the man who we're just talking about. Cool, calm, collected, ready to take on uh, another from the, the powerhouse Russian side. Uh, and here we go, adjusting so believe, the pieces, believe, getting set, our arbiter ready to oversee the match. I believe Grigorev, we saw him earlier in a uh, chess boxing light bout, or is, does he have a, uh, a twin brother? Uh, we, we had a, a, yes, yeah, we had uh, Mikhail taking on uh, Julio uh, from Italy, uh, and he is back already for his uh, championship uh, final. All right. Interesting All right. opening, uh, C4. It's, it is kind of, yeah, it's because now he's going to play E4. It looks like an E4, E5, you know, a, a normal open game. But uh, with the pawn on C4, it creates this kind of um, uh, clamp on the center, on that D5 square. And so um, we're going to be able to, to, to create some form of uh, space um, advantage that we're going to be able to keep on to. And trading off the good bishop uh, for black. Trading off the good... The good bishop, just because the, the pawns are on the light squares, he had a lot of squares uh, that he could move and control, uh, but the the, the white oh, mean, dark square mean, bishop gets dark, uh -huh, trades uh, off sure, for, sure, the, sure, sure. for the good bishop for black. This this you see it quite often in the Italian. Here, I, I'm, I'm not sure I would have recommended it, but at the same time, white now has a big a pawn mass in the center, and I would play a move just like Queen of Three and Castle Long, maybe just just to just to put some, you know, just to play some moves fast and to scare my opponent into a position that he's never seen before and he has to think about. Sure, yeah. So so advancing the queen to the second rank is a good way to defend. Uh, maybe a little counterattack potential by moving it to the F file. Uh, so F3 played, defending the pawn, but also eyeing down that weak F7 square that we've talked about a lot so far in this World Championship tournament. A few uh, fighters are losing from checkmate on that square early, in earlier rounds. Obviously, the D5 square calling out for the knight to trample on it. He's trying to find a cool verb. Trample was a good one. Horses do that. They do. Uh, yeah, d5 looks like a, a great move for the white knight to swing into, reinforcing that e3 pawn. Uh, and we'll see what kind of protection for the king both players have cooked up here. Uh, if we, uh, the white still needs to develop a lot if he comes over to the king's side. Probably not a great idea given um, the pawn structure. Uh, but if he makes his way over to the queen's side, it's already clear he could do it this move if he wanted to. I think he should just on principle. I mean, sometimes it, it's not the best move, but it's kind of calling out, and and you you know you have to respond to that. Now, some the D three pawn is also still currently undefended. It's it's a it's a good target or weakness for Black to start to mount an attack against. There, there is only one piece that can really attack that. It's the knight on c six, and uh, it's kind of easily defendable. So I'm not sure I would call it a weakness. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it's true that by castling long, you do solve that problem. Yeah, not yet, uh, but there's the bell. Wow, that came up quick. I didn't hear the 10-second warning, but uh, the bell has been rung. Um, not not a clear advantage. No, I thought actually because last time we saw Agnazar, he was doing pretty well in the chest. He was very natural as uh, Mikhail, for the moment, has been showing a few problems in chess. So I thought that it would have been 
pretty much one-sided, but this is not the case. Little, I actually prefer white. A little behind on development from from my assessment. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to see some more minor pieces develops, uh, move some pieces back, or move a few pieces a, few, a couple times. Brought the queen out early, like you said. I, I think his chess in, in last and in former rounds was uh, was a little stronger than what we saw in this first one. But uh, that was only the first round. Uh, we'll see how this boxing round goes before we get back to the chess. And this one, uh, the fighter's opting not to have any headgear, and that is uh, that is much to, to our uh, taste. delight yes. and entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I, think, I think both of these fighters are good boxers, and uh, we're about to see a clash of, of 90-kilogram titans. But it is 12-ounce it is gloves. Is this? Yes. Is, yes, it is. Oh, so this is the real deal. Correct. Uh-huh. Yep, 90 kilogram main event uh, regulations, meaning uh, we start on the chessboard and we alternate rounds between chess and boxing until checkmate or knockout. Time can also run out uh, and stoppages and illegal moves count as uh, one out of three in a round or four in a fight to, uh, to disqualify or TKO uh, the opponent. So this is not only the main event, this is the final of the main this event. This is the finals for okay. 90 kilograms. We, have, we will have a new 90 kilogram world champion. That, that, was, um, that was a funny start, wasn't it? They were very, very calm and then all of a sudden something broke. And, and this is his style. Remember, he looks yeah. very fluid, very easy going <laughs> and then he'll miss one and sting. You know, that, that old axiom, that quote from Muhammad Ali, flow go butterfly, sting like a bee. Watch this Kyrgyzstani. And you'll uh, you'll see echoes of, of Ali. Hands down, baiting think, that headshot. Ali, Ali was floating a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, just just wait till till the movement but, comes out. Yeah, different body types, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe <laughs> different movement styles. But there you uh, go. There he goes floating. There he's going floating. But it's, it is very much a chess game. Still feeling them out. I'm surprised by the Russian not uh, taking a little bit more initiative here. Um, so far, the, the Kyrgyzstani is winning this boxing round. Initiated more shots, taking shots than, than tying up, showing his experience. I love how chilly is. <laughs> uh, and, and big muscles on the Russian uh, can often signal like oh good athlete or oh gonna beat him up uh but to carl's point in an earlier fight and those can wear you out uh oh. muscles can take a lot of energy out of out of the body highly um, overrated and so it's maybe it's a good thing that the opa, russian is opa, opa, opa. pacing uh he does a ddt taking down the kyrgyzstani uh which is not a boxing move it and, <laughs> definitely uh, <laughs> isn't just in case you you, you know you're new to boxing uh, that is not allowed chess wwe coming to you soon and uh <laughs> oh i wouldn't be surprised in a stadium near you uh <laughs> we'll get jake paul to <laughs> to do a a match. Oh, well, Logan is the WWE. Oh, guys. Logan, I, I'm sorry. And, uh, I'm sorry. Jake's yeah. the Jake's the boxer, the boxer. but both would be uh, they, they very welcome. They would be very welcome in the chess boxing community. Jake, Logan, if you want to come try out something, challenge not just your body but your mind. Do you know who I would love to have you? Of all the influences, who? Andrew Tate. Yeah, he knows yeah. chess well. He knows chess. His, yep. I, I, well, I knew his father's name before I knew his. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Emery Tate. Uh, a, a chess coach and uh, pretty well known in the chess world uh, and teaching his kids chess. So, Andrew, if you're listening. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If he can ever uh, leave Romania. If he again. can leave Romania. <laughs> but I will, I will come to a Romanian prison. <laughs> oh, and have a chess boxing that, match. That would be cool. That would be fun. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The first boxing round is in the books. Unlike Chess Boxing Light, we do not uh, announce the winner of the round after rounds. I would give a slight edge to the Kyrgyzstani. More in control, uh, showing his, his ability to miss punches and then explode uh, back and counter. Uh, so a, a little bit more maybe experience, composure, patience, and, uh, and, and technical ability to the Kyrgyzstani. But, but nobody giving real difficulty to either one. I'm not even sure that the chess is going to be all that much, uh, uh, you know, bothered by it. And with an equal match like this, it is a marathon, not a sprint. So 
uh, with these fighters pacing themselves in the first boxing round, I actually really like that. I think it's smart by both uh, to let the chess game develop a little bit more before uh, getting that kind of desperate urgency that comes from dumping all your energy Absolutely. in a boxing round because it we, also affects the chess. And we don't see that very often. We do often see uh, somebody going for it, you know, as if they had something to prove. And it, it, it is refreshing to, uh, to have a bit of a slower pace, a slower start to it. Okay. That's right. And uh, you gave me an idea, Carl. I'm going to tweet at Andrew Tate and see if he'll tune into the World Championship right now. Oh, dude. Do that. So uh, talk about the chess for a little bit while my Twitter fingers go crazy. Okay. But I don't want to get him too scared about my chess level. <laughs> you might say no. Um, okay. So that night before that Matt was mentioning earlier has been played. And so the D3 and, and Castle Long has been played too. So we're be predicting pretty well what's going on um b5 that's that's a smart move that's actually to open up the queen side even if it's going to cost a pawn because actually it's not even going to cost a pawn you'd have to calculate things are getting a little bit messy here will he play a3 first because if he just takes 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 right then a2 is hanging so he's definitely going to get it back and the white king is going to be a little bit in a in a war zone there so my recommendation would be to kick the knight back. That's what he's done. And um, take it from there. Um, I think that the black's next move is kind of obvious. It would be to kick back. And um, still, again, if you take it, you're opening the B file. Um, it's, it's, um, it's... I think that's... It, it's a very good way of dealing with the position is not touching the side of your opponent's attack. It's doing it on the side of your own. So he didn't touch anything. He doesn't have to touch anything. Sure, the pawn structure is going to be a little bit weird with those. Once, once an exchange happens on C4, you're going to have double pawns on the E file. But those actually defend a lot of squares. Um, so E3, F4, D5, F5. And it reminds me of an article I wrote on the uh, Chinese school of chess, which is all about space and squares. Um, uh, a, a game of Lu Shanglei, I think, who, who won the Novi Sad um, uh, Championship in 2016. So, um, but Black hasn't castled. He hasn't given the address of his king yet. So it's, it's kind of uh, a bit of a western, a bit of a, um, a showdown here. Um, I like the knight being on d5 also controls the b4 squares just in case that pawn does advance maybe we can just grab it off the board and uh, rook a1 check would not be all that um, dangerous seeing as there's only one piece in attack and it's going to immediately be swapped off black does castle and I think that actually he didn't have all that much of a choice obviously he's castling into the attack but um, at the same time, where did you want to go? Did you, if you want to just stay in the center, you're going to have a lot of problem flowing with your pieces, connecting those rooks. So, yeah. So in terms of king safety, it looks like Black uh, ha has uh, a castled king, three pawns, but not many defenders over on that side of the board. And those those uh, G and H, G and H pawns are creeping their way down the board, and. Uh, already starting to be under attack is the, the white king on the queen side. What I really liked was the bell went, the ref stopped the clock, but both of them were still looking at the ball like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> it is a very interesting position. Uh, it Really, anything that could still happen at this stage, um, both kind of knocking on the door of, of attacking the opponent's king. Uh, but we will get to see another boxing round, and let's see if the energy picks up uh, in any way from e either the Russian or the Kyrgyzstani uh, side here um, would love to see a little bit more risks being taken for, for both. I, I, I think Kyrgyzstani took more last time and was rewarded for those. I think he edged out winning that round. Uh, but I, I'd like to see this Russian use his athleticism, try to create opportunities for himself and score some points. I think risks, yes. Uh, picking your spots, yes. But I, I, I'm actually kind of happy that it's not, you know, full brawl 100% of the time because the guys are saving their energy for the chessboard. And I think that this is, this will be the future strategies when you're going to respect your opponent and everybody kind of has a, a full package, you know, like in MMA compared to the when it started out and then it 
evolved, so everybody kind of had a, you know, decent grappling, decent striking, decent taking down. Here it's the same thing. Everybody's going to have, like, decent boxing, decent chess, and it is going to be much more, um, you know, much more respect given and uh, much more going all in with your energy and then regretting it later sure, on. Sure, and that's where the iterations and the evolutions of the sport come. But uh, let's get into this boxing action. A good jab to the body landed by the Kyrgyzstani. Uh, just a searching jab, kind of feeling f- almost like a feint, uh, seeing any kind of reactions from the Russian fighter. Russian overreacting to some of these feints from the Kyrgyzstani so far. You see uh, uh, too much movement when that jab comes. Um, and that, that are telegraphing. I, I definitely think the experience and the composure advantage is going to the Kyrgyzstani. I believe so, too. I, I, another thing is, as soon as the Russian gets hit, I believe he resets, rather than actually take it and, and counterpunch immediately. And you have to do that. Yeah, he's, he's stiff. He's muscling his punches. Uh, mm-hmm. where, whereas the Kyrgyzstani, just like that beautiful one, too, he's snapping his shots. Uh, he's making them unpredictable. Uh, he's very loose. I just like it, the, the, you know, his composure. The, the he, he's not he's not panicked right now. I mean, fighting with his hands down because he can see these stiff punches coming from a mile away. Good jab to the body lands for the Russian now. One another one two lands clean on the chin of of the Russian Kyrgyzstani. Uh, we're definitely winning that exchange. I'll, I'll take a jab to the body for a one two upstairs. And, and you see that when he throws the right, it is actually coming from upstairs. Even though the, the hounds are down, it is coming straight from, from there. So it's it's coming from different angles. And uh, Good have left hook lands for the Russian and gets a pop from the Russian supporters. Yeah, th- those hands down there, they're very awkward because, you, you know, you can come up and punch. You can punch from down there. You can bow down and punch from an angle. An uppercut hook combo lands for the Russian. Uh, the referee from Latvia separating and restarting the, the, the match after it. Great cross. Uh, not, not landing flush, but uh, landing on the Kyrgyzstani chin. Nice snappy jab. I really love the feints uh, from the Kyrgyzstani. He's, uh, he's, he's making his opponent uh, react to him. He's making it, and seeing that reaction, he's building his plan from what he does when he, when he feints the jab, feints a, a, a head movement, you know, lateral movement. Uh, it's really high-level boxing. He's also playing with the nervous system of his opponent. I remember Georges Saint-Pierre talking about that, that in the first fight with uh, another famous MMA fighter, he... he he thought that he was so fast that he would beat him to the punch. And basically, they realized on video that the guy was, was better at that. And so he started feigning a lot, and, and the guy just tired very fast because of his nervous system. So feigning is, is really a, a big component of boxing strategy. You can't just, it's not everything is you know spot on all the time if you don't mix it up it's a bit like in poker if you don't bluff at least 20 percent of the time it means you're just going to be predictable it's true feigning is a great way to download information from your opponent uh it's a great way to keep your opponent on on the reactionary side on the heels uh and 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 to set up shots because sometimes you faint sometimes you actually throw it and your opponent could be lulled asleep by feints and then catch a jab catch a combo that they weren't expecting but here we go. We are making our way back over to the stage where the chessboard is set up and in the same position as when they left. Uh, Kyrgyzstani putting back on a coat, staying warm, uh, and Russia following suit. And here they come back to their seats. Headphones coming back on. See, heavy breaths, probably a, a, a bit heavier from Russia. Some ner- nervous finger tapping from Kyrgyzstan. Is this the position? This is not the position. Yeah, I it is. There's, a, there's two knights on, 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 there's one on C3. I, I can't remember this. Yeah, it, it happened right at the end where the H pawn uh, recaptured on B4. Okay. That was the last move. Okay. It does look different because the, the king is that much more open. There's a check on A1 just ready. Mm, it is, but it, it doesn't seem too dangerous. It, it looks slightly more dangerous with the knight on B4. Even then, it isn't so much. Maybe he'll get a pawn out of it 
if uh, if the king comes up and rook takes d1 and then king takes d1. But even then, there's, there, there's a thousand ways. I think the king is relatively safe, even if he's out in the open. For now, but swinging over the, the queen and the other rook, you start to triple up on that A file with a with an entry to the king, and, and he senses it. Russia senses it and starts making his way away from that open file. The legendary triple stack of Nakamura. Oh. Yeah, we, we love a triple stack, whether oh. that's a burger or whether that's from, uh, uh, oh, Naka, from Na Naka. <laughs> Na Naka. Naka is a legendary triple stack. Uh, triple Stacker. Stack, yeah, triple stack. Mm hmm he says that always on his stream. He just makes me laugh. And maybe as the chess improves in this chess boxing world, we could see shorter time controls and other variations of the rule set. Earlier we were talking about a chess boxing fit style with bullet chess. How fast-paced and fun would that be? <laughs> that would be. But I must admit, I don't like this last move, knight a2. All you do, you, you ignore it, and you, you move the knight towards the center, knight e4, and then you, he just wonders why he did it. That yep. pawn on b2 is protecting the c3 square. The knight on e4 will be protecting that square, so there are no forks, and he does it. He it's does. just it's kind of an obvious move, to be honest. Just and, avoid. Mm -hmm. And it might seem that, okay, you are getting closer, but the f6 square isn't practical. Practicable? Am I saying this right? Practical. Mm -hmm. um, no, but you, you, you actually might want to, um, to to go on it, you know, to use it. And um, praticable in French, that's the word I'm looking for, but I just, I'm not finding it. And so interesting it, move combination. We we do have the, uh, the C1 square open for a check now. Uh, and... That pawn on d5. And then the, 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 well, the d3 pawn could fall. Okay, he's opting to go back instead of forward. Mm. I would have, I might have looked a little bit closer into using some kind of pin, some kind of, to get that 9 on f6 and, and, and the king made it. I, I would feel a sense of urgency, but that's. Well, uh, our, our Kyrgyzstani is in the driver's seat here with with about a minute advantage on the clock. That's very uh, much true, and I really like his last move because he's opening up uh, a file that's going to be in the center. That that white king now, I would say, is m definitely much weaker than the, the, the black one. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious why uh, white hasn't been more aggressive with that G and H pawn, uh, putting a little counter pressure onto the black king and starting to peel open that pawn wall that he has in front. Well, the knight, once it was uh, established on e4, it was kind of eyeing the f6 square and a sack, you know. So, and also this f5 move, this, this uh, pawn lever, this liberating move that uh, the, the Kyr Kyrgyzstani has just played, it wouldn't have been possible because we could take en passant and the knight would be there for the rook not to take back. So, um, I, think, I think that, yeah, white is slightly losing the plot. Well, here we go. We're gearing back up, getting ready for the second, I'm sorry. The second, third. Third, third Definitely. boxing round. Mm -hmm. This is one of the later fights we've seen. Uh, it's going deep. You know, we're, we're pretty low on time on the on the chessboard uh, with two minutes and one minute left. Um, a groundhog day. Black and white, mm -hmm. respectively, yep. And uh, we're in our third boxing round between these two competitors. Love to see an equal match. Yeah, no, no. It's a good... Uh good level in both and i like well rounded i think i think somehow that's that's supposed to be one of the goals right to to be well rounded in life in general now chess boxing okay, to me is a, a better way of jab from russia uh, breaking specialization you know that seems to be like an inherent message of chess boxing yes being good not just in chess not just in boxing but in both and the the skills it takes to transition between the two that minute in between rounds so important uh -huh. okay i think out of that exchange russia getting the better i like how he, he was able to switch it up and actually say okay if you want to mess uh, i can mess around okay too. now this is interesting the latvian referee broke up a holding and punching uh thing that that valfango earlier was not breaking up from the russian french matchup between uh ekaterina and lara 
Uh, so just the uh, little intricacies and differences between the referees. Uh, neither is right or wrong, but uh, ha- had the Latvian been overseeing that one, it might have gone a little different because a lot of damage was done to Laura while she was being wrapped up. Definitely. Definitely. I I, I, I did see that. I, I do, Well, I remember holding on to to other pe- to people's gloves and I, I, I remember one of my first fights being uh, in, in that situation and, and the ref should stop that yeah you're, you're not allowed to hold and punch at least at least in American chess boxing so I, or in American boxing Uh, we are getting back to the action. Um, still, uh, the same kind of demeanor from the Kyrgyzstani, keeping distance, uh, waiting for his opponent to make a move. It's just now the moves are a little bit better. They're a little bit more informed. The Russian feeling more confident and, uh, and mounting better attacks against the Kyrgyzstani. But a lot of these seem to be just ending in clinch after clinch after yeah. clinch. It's, uh, I, I wish I'd see a little bit more pivoting lateral movement, avoiding the clinch, and, and using it against the opponent, one side or the other here. But what, what's strange but is they seem to oh, both... That's a legal punch. Yeah. That's a legal punch. He just expected the clinch. Exactly what I was just saying. He, uh, he, he used expecting the clinch to break apart and then throw a shot, and, and it landed clean and flush for Russia. Probably the best punch he's landed so far. But it's funny because it seems that like this status quo of not much happening, um, it, it suits both fighters. Normally one is disagreeing because something's happening on the board. I think that maybe the Russian doesn't realize that the tables are turning on the board and uh, both believe in their chances. Well, there's the end of the round. And uh, man, I, I might give that one to Russia. Uh, that, was, that was a very impressive, um, I, I guess, increase in activity and, uh, and calculated aggression for Russia. I'd like to see that. I think uh, the, the first two rounds definitely go to Kyrgyzstan, but, uh, but Russia taking that third. So is this the last round of chess now? Because it's, is it seven rounds? Cool. No, it's, it's three minutes. Uh, so... so Regardless, one of the players will run out of time before the end of this chess round, right? So, there you so go. one has two minutes on, the so other has, has one minute on, mm-hmm. and that's why in the main event uh, regulation, uh, it, the the exact amount of time on the clock is the exact amount of time for the the four chess rounds. Mm-hmm. So one oh. fighter will lose on time before the end, which which means there's always a finite ending. It, it's not like uh, uh, regular boxing where it could be, be left up to the subjectivity of judges that could be corrupted, could be bribed, could be whatever. Exactly. Uh, and, and, you know, not just I, 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 speaking out of my ass there, that happens a lot, <laughs> unfortunately, no, in boxing. But not in just boxing. It is, uh, at least in that way, corrupt proof uh, because there's a clear winner that everyone can see how they won and, and understand it. I also like it on a symbolic level, just that countdown, that catastrophic, you know. Tick, tick, tick. Tick, tick, tick. Exactly. That's right. One, well, uh, one extra fear to have to deal tick, with. Tick, tick, tick. Under 40 seconds now is Mikhail from Russia. Definitely time being a consideration here. Yes, he might have won that last boxing round, but really, Akhnazar just needed to survive it and, and increase his time advantage, uh, which he has done so far. And he's trading off. It. Yep, he's trading off uh, pieces here. Um, so exchanging a pawn, uh, getting a check with a tempo, advancing his, his pawn all the way to uh, now the third rank. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, we could see protected passers here. That queen f5 was the move I would have suggested. There's a threat of mate in one uh, that he hasn't seen. And there is the checkmate that Carl saw coming. And Aknazar uh, inevitably going to win on time. But no, checkmate, no, 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 checkmate, checkmate. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, winning by checkmate by... Uh, battering up his queen and rook and checkmating on the F1 square. Big congratulations to our first timer 
first time from Kyrgyzstan, first time at the Chess uh, Boxing World Championship, uh, but uh, wearing a, a hat from his homeland oh, and bringing his great. flag oh. into the ring is the Kyrgyzstani who will be taking home the 90-kilogram World Championship. Big congrats. Uh, my former weight class and my former world title going to a new world champion. But you, there he is, hand raised. I, I feel that you have, you have a, already a... A, a, a great like for him. You, you feel connected to him in some respect. He reminds me a lot of my opponent from 2019 who eliminated me from the Turkish World Championship, uh, Tony. Tony was from France and uh, and had strong chest, maybe a bit stronger than Aknazar, uh, and uh, and probably weaker boxing than Aknazar, but similar build and uh, and both just as likable. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And President Montudas awarding the medal to Ak Nazar. Uh, Ak Nazar taking the uh, first place position in the 90 kilogram weight division. And that medal will be going home along with his hat and flag to Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> Big congratulations. Love the picture. Love his coach. Love He's I a legend. He, oh, gives, yeah. he gives me strong Yoda vibes or Mr. Miyagi maybe.